G'day and welcome to day 22 of the 100 Days of Shakespeare event. My name is Paul Adams from Small Crown Productions and I am pleased to have you here. If it is your first time here, then uh, this is the uh, the YouTube channel for my production company. So um, I run Small Crown Productions, I do independent theatre and film, and uh, this is a YouTube channel to talk about the work that we do, the things that we love in regards to um, producing and creating theatre and film work and of course you know a bit of entertainment along the way as well. Right now we are part of a 100 Days of Shakespeare event and uh, my contribution to that is to do 100 videos about Shakespeare. Some of them are short, some of them are a little bit longer. Um, treat them as jumping off points for your own research. If you want to see a little bit more of what other people are doing for this event there is a link in the description below uh, to the Facebook group where you can go and check out what's happening over there as well. Super excited! Tonight, what I want to talk about is the Globe Theatre. Now, I've touched on the three different types of performance spaces that were prevalent at the time. I'll link that video up here in the show card, uh, but you can also check it out in the playlist uh, it's it's called the three types of playhouses, I think, from memory. Um, so there were the amphitheaters, there were the indoor theaters, and there were the inns and the yards that, that they traveled and toured to. The Globe, obviously, being connected to Shakespeare, probably the most famous of all of them, but it wasn't the first. So the first theater of its type that was built was the theater. It was actually just called the theater, and it was built by John Burbage. John Burbage is the father of Richard Burbage, the players, the, the actor that worked with Shakespeare. Now, John Burbage leased the land for the theatre, and at some point there was a bit of a legal dispute, there was a few things that happened. Essentially, they pulled the theatre down, moved all the wood, and built the globe. Shakespeare became a partner in the globe and the work there. I, I won't dig into the details of that. But the first globe burnt down. Now, it's a pretty famous story. If you've done any kind of research around the globe, you'll probably know that to be the case. The first globe, there was a show happening. Something was fired. Some some tinder landed on the thatched roof and it burnt the theatre to the ground. What I'm about to read to you are actual civic records, historic records of the account of that burning down. And then I have something amazing to read you that, you know, it just blows my mind that we get to have these sorts of documents. So the first was uh, an account written by uh, Sir John, sorry, Sir Henry Wotton uh, to his nephew, Sir, Sir Edmund Bacon, so a notable character. So this is the, this is on July 2nd. Now, to let matters of state sleep, I will entertain you at the present with what happened this week at the bank side. The King's players had a new play called All Is True, representing some principal pieces of the reign of Henry VIII, which was set forth with many extraordinary circumstances of pomp and majesty, even to the matting of the stage. The knights of the order with their georges and garters, the guards with their embroidered coats and the like. Sufficient in truth within a while to make greatness very familiar, if not, if not ridiculous. Now King Henry makes a mask at the Cardinal Wolsey's house and certain chambers being shot off at his entry, some of the paper or other stuff wherewith one of them was stopped did light on the thatch where being thought at first but an idle smoke, and their eyes more attentive to the show, it kindled inwardly and ran around like a train, consuming within less than an hour the whole house to the very grounds. This was the fatal period of that virtuous fabric, wherein yet nothing did perish but wood and straw, and a few forsaken cloaks. Only one man had his breeches set on fire that would perhaps have broiled him if he had not, by the benefit of a provident wit, put it out with a bottle of ale. <laughs> so, let's reflect on this for a moment. The king's men are playing in the globe. 
It's no doubt a pretty full house if they're playing. There's going to be a lot of people there. Some guns are shot. Some of the stuff that's inside it, the fake kind of kindling, whatever is inside the guns to make them appear that they've been fired. A piece of that flies up, sets the roof on fire. And that account says that within an hour, the whole place was burnt down. Unbelievable. Now, when you consider that some of those theatres could could house up to 3,000 people, that's an amazing thing. And only one man had his breeches set on fire and he put it out with a bottle of ale. So, think about that. That's an amazing thing. So here is an account written uh, on the 8th of July by John Chamberlain to Sir Ralph Winwood. The burning of the globe or playhouse on the bankside on St. Peter's Day cannot escape you, which fell out by appeal of chambers that I know not upon what occasion were to be used in the play. The tamplin or stopper of one of them lighting in the thatch that covered the house burned it to the ground in less than two hours with a dwelling house adjoining. And it was a great marvel and fair grace of God that the people had so little harm, having but two narrow doors to get out. How is that? So we get a little bit more of an insight into the architecture of the globe that there were only two narrow doors for people to get in and out of. So this was obviously, you know, a way for them to control people coming in and out, being able to control the gatherers, being able to take the money as people came in. So when the roof set on fire, two accounts tell us that within two hours, the entire theatre that would have been approximately 80 feet wide burnt to the ground within two hours. Amazing. Now, this is what I want to read you that is is not something that you see very often. Yeah, I, I know there are some people that have never seen this. This was a sonnet written, not by Shakespeare, but uh, believed to be written uh, potentially by William Parrott um, about the burning down of the globe. So it is a few stanzas long, so bear with me as I read through it, but it will give us a a really interesting picture of the burning down of the playhouse. So this is an actual sonnet written about the first globe burning to the ground. And here we go. It is titled, A Sonnet Upon the Pitiful Burning of the Globe Playhouse in London. Now sit the down Melpom... I'm going to start that again. (laughs) Now sit the down Melpomene, wrapped in a sea coal robe, and tell the doleful tragedy that late was played at Globe, for no man that can sing and say, but was scared on St. Peter's Day. O sorrow, pitiful sorrow, and yet all this is true. All you that please to understand, come listen to my story, to see death with his raking brand amongst such an auditory. Regarding neither cardinal's might yet the rugged face of nor yet the rugged face of Henry the Eight, O sorrow, pitiful sorrow, and yet all this is true. This fearful fire began above a wonder strange and true. And to the stage house did remove as rounds as tailor's clue, and burnt down both beam and snag, and did not spare the silken flag. O oh, sorrow, pitiful sorrow, and yet all this is true. Outrun the knights, outrun the lords, and there was great ado. Some lost their hats and some their swords, but outrun Burbage too. The reprobates that, though drunk on Monday, prayed for the fool and Henry Condé. O sorrow, pitiful sorrow, and yet all this is true. The periwigs and drumheads fry like to a butter firkin. O woeful burning did betide to many a good buff jerkin. Then with swollen eyes like drunken Flemings, distress stood old stuttering Hemmings. O sorrow, pitiful sorrow, and yet all this is true. No shower his rain did there down force in all that sunshine weather. 
to save that great renowned house, nor thou, O ale house, neither. Had it begun below sands doubt, their wives for fear had pissed it out. O sorrow, pitiful sorrow, and yet all this is true. Be warned, you st stage stutterers all, lest you again be catched, and such a burning do befall, and as to them whose house was thatched. Forbear your whoring, breeding biles, and lay up that expense for tiles. O sorrow, pitiful sorrow, and yet all this is true. Go down you p a petition, and do, do you not abhor it, and get with low submission a license to beg for it. In churches, sands, church wardens, cheeks, in Surrey and Middlesex, O sorrow, pitiful sorrow, and yet all this is true. Ah, how good is this? It's just so good. So there's a couple of really interesting things in here. Um, I mean, A, the alliteration, which we've talked about in a couple of the other videos. Um, the imagery of the types of people that were attending the plays is just so good. The image of all of the players running out in character, you know, in their forms, you know, out, not, outrun the knights, outrun the lords, and there was great ado. Some lost their hats and some their swords, then outrun Burbage too. The reprobates, though drunken on Monday... Prayed for the Fool and Henry Condé. I mean, ah, it's just such a vivid image of, of everybody running and, and actors included, the, the players included, all getting out. What an incredible sonnet and an incredible record of such an iconic moment in English theatre. I will transcribe this sonnet and I will put it in the description below so that you can have a copy of it yourself, because I know these books are hard to come by. Um, the four set volume cost me quite a bit of money uh, 20 years ago when I bought them. And, uh, and I know that they are out of print and it's uh, unusual to find the volumes. Uh, volume two is one that you do see sold fairly often. So um, you may find it, uh, but often you'll only find them sold in single volumes. But anyway, so there you have three historic accounts of the burning down of the original Globe Theatre. How good is that? So there you have it. Uh, I'll pop a reference to that in the description below. That's it for tonight. Thanks so much. It would be great if you gave this video a like. Crush that subscribe button. Smash, crush, push, click. Whatever it is that takes your fancy. This could be something that you know somebody else that would be interested in. So pay it forward, help them out, share it with them, tag them in the comments, whatever you got to do, get it into their hands. And I will see you on the next one. See ya.